To complete our index page, we want to display a list of all recipes that have been submitted to our app. To do this, we're going to use a repeating group, which is a special type of container for lists. Once we draw this on the page, we want to declare what type of content this repeating group expects. We do this in its property editor, and we drop down the type of content to pick recipe. Now Bubble knows that this repeating group will be displaying a list of recipes. We'll adjust the width to be 1060 pixels, just like our main container, and we'll adjust the height however we see fit. There are a few options when it comes to customizing your repeating group, as we have different layout styles to choose from. Vertical scrolling will add a scroll bar, where extendable vertical scrolling will add the entries as you scroll down the page without adding a scroll bar. The full list will show as many entries as you have in your database. Fixed number of cells will show you as many entries as you tell it to. And horizontal scrolling will only allow you to scroll to the right, giving you only one row to work with to display your list. For our repeating group, we're going to click extendable vertical scrolling and change the amount of rows to three. Our repeating group repeats through lists of information. For this app, it needs to find a list of recipes. To set this, we need to have our data source retrieve the data from our recipe database. When we click, we add an expression to the data source. And the expression we want to pick is do a search for, which is Bubble's extremely simple way of searching through your app's databases. When we click on do a search for, we pick the database we want to search through, and now Bubble is searching through that database. We've now set up this repeating group to search for every recipe in the recipe database. And we have more control than just searching. We can also sort the recipes by any built-in field or custom field that we've made. On our index page, we want to retrieve the most recent entries that are submitted to our app. So we'll sort this search by the created date and we'll set the descending to yes, which will sort our search in descending order, showing us the most recent ones up top. Now that our repeating group's set up, let's drop a text box into the first cell and notice that it now repeats for every other cell in our repeating group. And all that's left for us to do is design each element in the first cell and it'll repeat for every entry that we search for. For this text box, we wanna insert dynamic data. And because it's inside our cell, we get a new expression called current cell. Specifically, Bubble is giving us the current cell's recipe, since that's the type of content the repeating group is set to. When we select current cell's recipe, we get all of the custom fields and expressions we have access to. For this text element, we want to know the recipe's name. We can then easily design this by selecting a style for this text element. Let's go ahead and draw on another text element right underneath the name. And this one will get the current cells recipes headline, which will give us a one liner about that recipe. Now we need a way to view the recipe on its own page. So we'll draw a link right underneath the headline and we'll set up this link to go and say, view the recipe. And we'll set the link destination to an internal page with the destination page set to recipe. Then we'll edit the style of the standard link to make it look a little more subtle. Finally, we'll draw an image to the left of these elements to show the recipe's photo. We'll set the source of this image to the current cell's recipe's photo. Now that the elements inside our cell are set up, we can adjust them however we'd like, and then we want to select all of them and group elements in a group. Now this is going to change something that we need to make note of. The group will now have a data source of the current cell's recipe, whereas all of our individual elements will have parent group's recipe. Bubble automatically set the group's data source, giving us the parent group to choose from so we can nest this data and access it as many groups down as we need to. This is how Bubble handles parent-child relationships, and it's something we'll see more of in this course. We can adjust the group's width and height and center it horizontally and vertically as we see fit, and then give it a style and call it card. We'll style this so it can really stand out for each individual entry within the repeating group. Now when we preview the page, we have no entries in our database to show in our repeating group. So in the next lesson, we're going to add the post recipe functionality to this app.